Hello everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Today I am going to be working on some flats and showing you guys my process of doing flats for my comic book. Uh, right off the bat I do want to apologize. I originally was doing this in real time with my voiceover in the video at the same time so I'm gonna try and match it as best I can because I'm doing this as a voiceover now. Um, I'm just showing you the tools that I use. For the most part, I use the magic wand tool set to intersect. And I have apply to connected pixels only checked off. It is not, it is not checked. And then I use the lasso fill tool. I also use the polyline fill tool with just the fill, no line with that. Those are kind of the three tools that I use for the most part. In my last video I showed you kind of how I set up all of my layers and everything. If you have any questions on how I do that, please refer to that video because it really does help me at least to have everything organized so I know exactly where everything is. For me personally, to stay organized, I like to do all of my flats all in the same layer. Now for this page, I have everything colored except for this one panel. That way I could kind of show my process of doing it. I first kind of separate the panel into different zones, I guess, with foreground, midground, background. Or if it's a less complicated picture, maybe it's just like the character versus the background. Basically, I, I split it into bigger chunks first. That way I can split it into smaller chunks later and I can use the uh, magic wand tool and select that, hide the selection lines. That way I don't worry about going outside of those lines and I can keep everything on the same layer, but I'm only affecting one section of the panel. You can kind of see here, I just go along the edge of whatever I'm working on. Right now it is the character, just kind of draw along his contour lines, fill him all the way in, and then later I will go in and I will separate his like skin, hair, clothes, etc. The background will be its own little thing. And uh, I use these bright colors for a couple reasons. The main one is I don't really care what color I'm separating things into. If I worry about the local color too much, then it would it would take more time. It's easier just to grab whatever color and then I can change it to the local color. Uh, once everything's separated, I can just use the, the fill bucket tool. It's, it's way easier. The other reason I do that and use these brighter, really saturated colors, especially on a background like this where it's kind of a desaturated, a little bit darker of a color. That way, if I miss any sections, then I can, I can tell. Sometimes I'll miss like a pixel or two or things will overlap and it's just easier to see it all together that way. If I, um, if I miss something, they're not like, it's not all bright colors or all really similar desaturated colors or whatever. So for the rest of this, I am just going to uh, do this all in time lapse so you aren't sitting here watching me do this whole thing real time. It does take a little bit of time, but the results are the quickest and the best that I've been able to come across. I'm not a big fan of just using the fill bucket because it leaves gaps underneath the line art where like your background color would be, which can potentially cause issues when you're downscaling for printing online or posting online or for printing. So I will uh, let you watch me do the flats for the background and I will pick it back up in a moment once we get to the next section.
All right, so now you can see I'm separating the character into his different sections. It's much easier to select with the, the wand tool. We can select everything that's that same color. And then I choose something that's um, on the opposite of the color wheel. Maybe not directly opposite. It doesn't really matter. Just something that's different enough that once again, if you miss some pixels, I would be able to tell really easily this orange against the purple. Um, it just keeps me a little organized and then as the colors go on, I, all I do is I just choose slowly darker and darker colors just from that same window. I have the wand tool set to only recognize that very specific color. So even if the colors are are pretty similar, the the magic wand well, magic wand will only choose that one specific color while I'm uh, wanting to you know change the colors to the local colors or anything like that. And it just it goes a lot faster, especially once you break it down into the smaller sections. And this is pretty similar to what I used to do uh, in Photoshop, except I use just the regular lasso tool. Um, this make the lasso fill tool just really makes it so I can tell where the the selection is. Um, it it goes pretty quickly, and then I'll show you here once I fill everything in. That's the correct local color here. Now I already have the other panels done, so I'm just selecting the, um, they're not technically the local color anymore, they're kind of the environmental color, what those colors look like in this specific lighting, uh, time of day, etc. It makes it just so that it fits in with the rest of this piece. Now normally I would do the flats all for the sa for the page first. I'd do everything all together and then I would do the color adjustments uh, after all the colors are laid down. That way I know for certain that they match and everything is harmonious. But I did leave this panel so I could show you guys kind of what I do, especially with a panel that has more than just a character and a background, which um, this page, other than the uh, the first panel, pretty much all of these are just him doing something on a fairly blank background. So this had a four, well, kind of a foreground with the chair, and then he's in the midground and the background with the window. Well, that is pretty much the end of this video. I'm just adding some rim light to help him stand out a little bit from the page, add kind of that moon glowing look. That way it keeps that night feel without it getting too dark, without everything being so, so dark, which is a problem that I tend to have and have a lot of really, really dark colors. But, um, yeah, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to do some more tips and tricks and probably some more chatty videos. If you guys have any questions on comic book making or comics and art in general or want to learn something specific, leave it in a comment below and I will see if it's something that I am capable of giving some thoughts or knowledge on. I am not the best comic artist or know the most or whatever, but really I have a good time making comics and I did study comic art in college, so I do have some tricks of the trade that from doing that I learned and maybe I can show them off to you guys. Well, thanks again everyone. Check me out on social media and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye!